What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. Come here, Luke. Y'all, this is my six-year-old Luke, and I have not let him look in this bucket yet. Luke, you ain't never seen a fish that looked like this. Watch this. Look. What is wrong with that thing? Do you know what kind it is? What's your take a guess? Tile. How do you... A what? You guys said what you were got. Oh, he was eavesdropping. Jake, look at this thing. Y'all check out Jake. He finally got him a, Ooh, a favorite that shirt that fish. fits. There's a red fish. Luke, pull them other fish up here and, and put them on the cleaning table. Here's a big fish. So y'all, we went out today. My cousin Ross is in town and Kelly and I just wanted to go catch dinner. Just enough fish for dinner. We just got home from Alabama. My mom actually grabbed the kids from school for me today and we only had like three hours of fish. I wanted to catch a tile. Luckily for us, we did for dinner. These fish live in crazy, crazy deep water. 700 plus foot of water. We use my hooker electric to drop down that deep just because hand fishing that deep is no fun. We also caught some of these big, beautiful bee liners is what we call them, vermilion snapper. These were in about 300 foot of water. We just used squid for bait, got a heavy weight at the bottom, four or five hooks, put a piece of squid on every hook, send it down, and the rest is history. Look at that. Okay. Kelly and I were wondering, and more Kelly than me, but it is a good point. What do you think that's for right there? I guarantee you it's to sense vibration. So these fish live down there in the mud, really deep mud. Yeah, Luke dropped it in the dirt. Luke, yeah. in the dirt. So these fish live in deep mud. If your weight hits the bottom and doesn't stick when it comes tight, you're not in the right spot. So I wish, I wanna know, if you do know, leave a comment below. And if you haven't checked out my very last video, I promise you whether you like freshwater fishing or not, you might wanna check it out because it's catching huge catfish, not necessarily huge, but real big catfish on soda. You will never see a video like that on YouTube anywhere on any channel, I promise you. It's so funny because we actually get some hate in certain videos about using electric reels. That's like walking when you have a car parked in the driveway. A lot of y'all wonder what I use to sharpen my knife. This is it. Just that simple. I will tell y'all a really funny story right now that you've never seen on YouTube either. When we were in Mississippi last year, Kelly needed to sharpen her knife. Well, for so it's gonna make me gag thinking about it. I don't even know how you were holding. How did you hold it when you cut yourself? I don't know. I was just. She did something like, like. I was just this or something and cut herself so bad we almost had to go to the hospital in Alabama. They got that bad boy. Y'all, let's just go back to see what this fish looked like when it came right out of the water. Shark? Shark? Oh! Never mind. <laughs> I didn't get a good look on it. Oh, wee baby. Oh, that's such a pretty one. Wow. These boogers have been elusive today. But seriously, though, there's a little bit of that on your squid, and bingo. This little thing right here, like, what do they use this for? Like an antenna? Yeah, that's pretty crazy looking, wasn't it? Their eyeballs get popped out of their head because of the pressure in the water. These little bee liners like this, we're going to go out and do a video from start to finish on how to catch them because this time of the year they can be really plentiful. <laughs> no, <laughs> He's like, it's cold in here! <laughs> Like, well, while I'm in here, look at him, he's humiliated right now. We're in there. Oh no. He's humiliated. <laughs> he's being yourself. He's like, just get me out. Oh goodness. Cut us a small stuff. Oh goodness. Yep, there's ice in there, redneck. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> 
funny. You notice I got my glove on me so I can get a little bit more aggressive. Look at that. Perfect. These bee liners can get really, really mushy. Another way you can clean them is look, see how I didn't cut over the rib cage? If you do it like that, you just come in here and pop these ribs out. If you ever catch these or lanes or yellowtails, you'd better take good care of them when you catch them because they will get crazy mushy. Now look, this is just my seven inch Pro Series Danko. Cut just like that. Perfect. Cut right under that. Jake, did he run off already? Yeah. I need to start making Jake clean all of our fish. Yes, he Isn't does. Isn't that what we have them. kids for, is to do that kind of stuff for us? Yeah, Now look here, let me tell you what my mom's about to do with this piece of fish right here. Take that little piece of bloodline out right there. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. All right, you see me clean a bee liner. Let me just do the other side so you get, now, if you don't want to clean it how I normally do it and you want to do it this way, I'm bending that knife with my wrist as I go, getting it right on the backbone, just like that. Save yeah, you can save the backbone. Ross must have watched my last crappy video. You can fry that right there. Woo. Jake, mm -hmm. you know what's crazy about my two boys? Is we've had this contender now like I don't know, two months, and they've yet to be on it. Just yeah. seems like every time we take it, they're either at school or at their mom's house. But I think this weekend, I'm gonna take him and his buddy Venture out snapper fishing. Or possibly spear fishing, because the sheep's head are in real thick right now. Or fish gigging. What do you want to do, fish gig? We do whatever. I mean, don't you fish gig at night? Yeah. Oh. But you two can't stay up very late at night. I'll go fish gigging. I used to pull all nighters in middle school. So it was so funny. Ryland in Alabama, Holder's son. I walked in the house and he was snoring at like 11 o'clock. He come walking out the next morning. He's like, y'all, I stayed up till 1 30. Mm. I'm like, Ryland, you were sleeping at 11 30. He's like, no, I wasn't. I was up. I think I say it in the catfish video. I can't even remember if I got to that part of editing, but Ryland had been hunting a really, really nice buck. And he likes to fish so much, I made a deal with him that if I bring him down here for a week of fishing, can I kill his buck? He's like, absolutely. Did you kill his buck? No, Dad did, so Dad owes him a week of fishing. <laughs> <laughs> Rylan, I will take you fishing, I promise. All right, I need to get to what y'all came here for in this crazy looking mud guppy. Look at it, look, just look. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. All right, here goes nothing. Pretty much every fish you'll ever clean is exactly the same. You just find their backbone, poke it through. If you're cleaning trigger fish, that's when you really, really better tread lightly. The weird thing about today, and I, I would have made an entire fishing video out there, but there was four commercial fishermen right where I always fish. And the fish were not biting that good. We actually had to do like four drops. So if y'all ever wonder why I do videos like what you're watching now, where I sort of talk you through it at my house, it can be that the wind is real bad, the fish weren't biting, and it took us all day to catch one. There's a whole bunch of reasons, and today it was a little bit about the wind and a lot about that the fish weren't biting very well. Find his backbone. Now tile fish actually have a lot more pin bones than most fish. Their pin bones run all the way down the length of their body. So the cool thing about tile fish is if you stepped in the mud that they live in down there, you probably couldn't get it off your feet. 
And you could never tell that fish lived in it because he's clean as a whistle. His meat's beautifully clean. I'm going to show you in just a second what the pin bones I'm talking about. They actually run all the way down. So I just cut the bloodline out just like so. If you ever see tile fish on a menu, don't be scared to try it because it's an amazing fish. And most deep water fish are. For those of y'all just tuning in and haven't seen me in a while or that are new to the channel, this is a Danko knife. It's less than $20 and if you use my promo code, which is in the description below, you can get it for like 18 bucks. It won't rust, it's easy to sharpen, it's just an all around awesome knife. With a very pointy with a, tip. With a very pointy tip that will wreck you. Alright, I'm going to finish up this fish and I will see you all in there where Miss Betty's going to cook us up some fish sandwiches. Okay. Look at that. She just added about 50-50. 50% 50 50 cornmeal, 50% flour. Yes. Mom, this you ain't fish, you ain't supposed to cook this. Y'all come over here while she's seasoning that up. Look, so all she's doing is breading it. And this is the easy part. What she's gonna do in that cast iron skillet later is the important part. Watch this guppy right here, goby or whatever. It's actually he's sort of like the tile fish, but he doesn't live in the ground. His name is Mr. Piggy, because he eats like a pig. Come over here though. Alright, cool. He's watch this, y'all. Watch. You see that little nose sticking out? Watch this. He I think he's camera shy. Because every time we do this, he stays in his hole. He'll smell it though. Uh-oh, I think he's coming. I think he's sleeping. Right now is one of those three moments later. Uh-oh, here we go. Hello. He's about a foot long. He never comes all the way out when we film. Yeah, He no does kidding. that. Our lights broke right here and it's a little dark in here, but this is a sea bass. And as you can tell, he's hungry. You gotta get some down to the hermit crab without him eating it. He's trying to choke down that piece of snapper he just got. Okay, you just get your grease. We've just got a little oil here and it's used oil. It's best to use some oil that's used or if you're using fresh new oil, then just uh, add some used oil to it. And it, it just has, gives it a better flavor and seems like the fish doesn't soak up as much oil. And you just wait until your your oil is, is mom pretty. that austin croker taught me a better way to do this <laughs> you just stick your finger in the grease and then he well, Rob, robert's cameraman austin crocker was over here the other day doing something and we were cooking and i'm like is the grease ready and he just stuck his finger in there and it dawned on him that no you can see put just sprinkle some in there you don't want it to be too hot this right here so if you watch a lot of my videos, I'm always cooking things that are different. I practice on this. I had an idea earlier when Kelly and I were in the grocery store and I'm going to put some fish in here to do a trial run. So if it is really, really good, I got a good tester. Look at him right here. He's watching I'm the winning. next episode of Blue Game. That's my cousin Ross who lives in Milton. Kelly and I, anytime we go to like Alabama or Louisiana, we always show up, not for him, but for his wife, Frances, because she's the most insane cook ever. She makes some of the best desserts. We're thinking about going to gas, but we just got an estimate for this kitchen, and it's about 60 grand, and I ain't ready to do that. I got to pay that contender off before I do a new kitchen, y'all. Man, but can y'all smell that. That's the tile fish. Come over right here to aisle two. Mom done browned up these. I'm trying to find the top, these hoagies. Now listen, it, you might be saying, there's nothing to that sandwich. Listen, when your mom cooks something that's special, no matter how it is, I can assure you that. Thanks, Gabriel. Ross, come over here to the table. We gotta get you to sample it. Big old piece of tile fish. We're gonna do a couple pieces of lettuce. 
just romaine. No, the table's over there, Bob. Oh, well, I, mean, I just want to make sure that you didn't <laughs> mess up the sandwich. I mess up my sandwich. I forgot the tomatoes. Just like so. There's tomatoes right there. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I forgot. I forgot, to, I forgot to put them on there. Oh. Ooh, it fell off. The thick piece of fish. Thick boy. A thick boy. This is gonna get messy. Just letting you know. Mm-hmm. Don't blame me. That's my middle messy. name is messy. That is your first, middle, and last name is messy. Ross, tell her to quit talking smack. Mm -mm. Kelly, just Ooh. whatever you think you need to say about it, go ahead. All right, let me go off my chest. Jake, <laughs> reach down there and grab Ross's sandwich and take your bite. Take your bite. It's good. I'm good. Look at Jake. Look at Luke. What is he even doing? I need to wash my hands. He's taking big bites out of my sandwich. <laughs> well, I mean, he's your third cousin. L yep. Look at Luke. He just poured soap all over his hands and now he's dropping all over the floor. Oh, no. Ooh, Grandma tear that butt up. Oh, she's fixing a dunk you, son. You better tread lightly, Eel. You'll end up like Luke over there getting beaten in the sink. How was it, Jake? Yeah, that's good. Just a quick, fun video. Did you have fun today? So Ross is actually from Milton, that's where he lives. He's down here at Outboard Specialties getting a Sea Star? Sea Station. A Sea Station put on his big boat so when Kelly and I get up there, he can sit back in the recliner, tell us where to drop and when to drop, and we can catch some big fish in the Pensacola area. Huge shout out to Outboard Specialties, that's who put on all of our motors, really, on my bay boat and my big boat. They keep us running 24-7. Mike and Mike at Outboard Specialties. If you need a Suzuki, or if you have one, they are the people to go to, I promise you. You got anything you want to say? No. Did Grandma just tune that butt up in the sink, or what? Oh, busted. <laughs> busted. All right, that's it. Just a quick, fun, short video. Mom's still over there cooking. Jake's fixing to start pigging out. Like I said earlier, my dad's sick, so my mom's gonna take him a plate. We're headed to Venice, Louisiana next. Seven straight days of shrimping, crabbing, crawfish, bow fishing for giant catfish and giant gar, nutria rat hunting and everything you can imagine, Venice, Louisiana. Until next time though, like Jake always says, it's time to get up out of here. And get the heck out of shape.